Okay, welcome back everyone to Belinder, where we are continuing on this Akira class uh, starship build. The work I've done has been somewhat minimal as it uh, first appears. I've added in a few extra of the primitive details such as bridge placement, uh, buzzard collector, uh, buzzer scoop collector it's in the front of the nacelles. Uh, you might have probably noticed I did redid the bottom portion of the saucer because um, you know well I want to try to flesh that one out because that's also a very prominent feature of the ship in my own opinion did the little recessed enclave here in the saucer section where we're going to be having the uh, the front the front facing um, uh, shuttle bay doors. I do need to make the saucer section a lot thicker. Did a lot of work like we said we were going to be doing and we're going to be continuing with today on this back portion of the weapons module right here. Uh, but you can also probably look in the background and notice that I've had to go ahead and replace the the image that I was using for references. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that real quick before we get into working on this the reason being is that once I started modeling with this I was noticing some some stuff especially when I was working on the bottom I was noticing some discrepancies now the image that I was originally using and I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up real quick uh, we're gonna go ahead and add in another Let's minimize both of the, or yeah, minimize, add in another image just temporarily. I'm going to delete it. Um, have the image loaded up, the Akira views. There we go. And just for the sake of us looking at it, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here. Okay, there we go. As I was modeling the ship, I was noticing that there was some discrepancies, that I was able to get things to line up on one side, but I wasn't able to get, get it to line up on the other side. And it was baffling me. I mean, I did everything that I could possibly think of doing. I recentered the image to make sure that it was, you know, that the lines, you know, these lines, X, Y, and Z coordinates were, were dead center on the ships. I, you know, checked and double-checked rotation. I made sure that... The mesh I was modeling was dead center also on the X, Y, and Z coordinates, whichever one I was modeling. Um, but, I mean, despite, try as I might, I kept getting, I mean, it just, it just wasn't looking right. And I do know that this right here is supposed to be the actual uh, image model from the actual movie, from Star Trek First Contact. Um you know, fork side orthos views from that exact same model. And it kept bothering me. And I was looking at, then I started looking at it closer and I figured out exactly what the issue was. And surprisingly, this model, the actual model that was used in the movies, it's not symmetrical. I mean, it's not symmetrical. I mean, it's, it's pretty darn close, but surprisingly, it's not symmetrical. So I don't know if they used mirror or what program they used and if it had you know uh, mirror capabilities to where they could just mirror the model but uh, this was the area the area that I was working on right here that was actually giving me the most trouble so it's probably the most asymmetrical and you can actually see it if you look right here I mean look at uh, right here look at these windows see how they're bordering right on the edge of this right here and see how much space is between this section here where the oops sorry about that I just kind of just bit down real hard on my teeth uh, but right here with these lifeboats are at look at the space between this part and here now look down here you see these same windows notice these windows over on this side are a little bit bigger than the ones on this side that's because you're able to see most of these and look at the distance right here's that part of that hull now look at the distance between these um you know between these uh life sorry i can't think right now for some reason these lifeboats compared to the hull uh, now, it could possibly be that this is not a true orthographic image, and that might be so much the case. I mean, looking into here, 
uh, it looks like, but it could be shadows. This side's a little bit bigger than this side. This right here, this little red strip right here, which I think is, yeah, it's, it's just the decals. Looks like it's a little bit longer on this side than on that side, which would correspond if you flip that ship around to be on this side. Uh, the shorter side, the side with the shorter windows and everything. Uh, from the back, I mean, you, it looks like you can see a few more windows on this side than you can on this side. So it may be that this image, the actual studio model, may not be as symmetrical as as it's supposed to be. And it wouldn't be really surprising because all those ships in first contact ex that you see in the, um, the batter for Sector 00, zero was computer generated i mean there were no physical models except for the enterprise the defiance and the enterprise e if i remember correctly and i think maybe even the borg model might have been uh physical but the rest of them were cgi and they admitted that a lot of them were not and if you see ever read the uh, star trek magazine you would know that those models were not very accurate we're not not very accurate. Um, that's not the word. We're not very detailed. And they said this was the one that they put the most work into because it was supposed to be a quote unquote, um, you know, it's it's not the hero ship to where it's the Enterprise, but it, they wanted this one to be a, seen a lot closer, so they put a lot more detail into it. But it was still possibly kind of a rush job, and I'm pretty sure they took cut some corners thinking, you know, well, you know. There were a few things that they probably didn't really need to put as much detail in. So I looked around on the internet and I found this image here, which I converted to black and white. They were all different colors, but I've converted it. And it seems like that it was pretty much symmetrical. Whoever did it tried to make it much more symmetrical. And you can see that everything is, especially if we go into the, I think it's on this particular one. Yeah, the bottom view. You know, this here matches up on both sides. On the other one, didn't match up with both sides. And the details may not be 100% accurate as opposed to what we see in the actual studio model. But that was another problem that I had with this is trying to get, um, you know, consistent data. Because if you look around the internet to try to find pictures of this ship, Every single one of them is going to be just a little bit different because besides that one that I showed you earlier, which is the primarily one that I'm going to be using, they were, they're actually not studios. They were actually made by third parties, other people. It's their interpretation. So there's always some little differences. Like one image that I thought for the longest time was the actual mo model in the weapons pod these little areas right here these little recessed areas those were modeled as uh, thrusters but that's they're not thrusters on this actual ship all the thrusters just like the enterprise d are on the or even the enterprise are on the saucer section so i discarded much to that now so i'm going to use this and use the for my orthos and i'm going to try to pull as much details off of the the other picture that you saw that I was using for the orthos uh, as, as much as possible, I mean, you know, for all the little details and everything. But there's probably going to be some areas where it's going to have to be my interpretation, uh, just like how many of them are. Because, once again, the model, even though it's pretty good up, you know, from a distance, once you start getting up close, and we can look at that later on, maybe in later episodes. But enough talk. Let's go ahead and get to it. We are still working on this command module i'm sorry weapons module right here and as you can see and i'm going to go ahead and go into a rendered mode done a bit of the basic detailing especially at the top still need to do some detailing at the bottom but we have the recessed areas in the front and in the back for the uh for the torpedo tubes uh which we'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, the basic shape is done. Uh, the bottom still needs a lot of work, but it's a good place to start. And the, the thing that we're going to be working on today, or at least for the next few minutes, I don't know how long it's going to really probably take us, is some of these little surface details here. I know it's 
might seem a little bit too early in the game for me to be working on this because there's so many other little things that I could be working on. But I want to work on this because how I work on this and how it looks on this particular model is going to um, is going to say a lot in terms of how I'm going to model the rest of this entire ship because there's one or two things that I could do with little details such as this. Now that studio model that I was just showing you earlier, a lot of these little details aren't surprisingly modeled. They are uh, bump mapped in, which means that they're using the the way that the model, the textures are drawn and the way that light is manipulated. Um, pardon me, just one minute. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, but the way that the light is manipulated, it makes it look like that there's raised details or enclosed details, but they're really not. It's, rel it's really smooth. I've seen a lot of people where they go ahead and model these, and that's what we're going to go ahead and try. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, and there's several different ways that people do this, but I'm going to try something. Um, this is not the first time that I've done it, but it's not necessarily a way that I do it a whole lot, but I want to still give it a try. Uh, sometimes people would probably model a separate mesh on top of this and just kind of just, you know, intercede it into into this mesh so it's kind of two meshes overlapping I really don't quite like doing that and I could go in and try to you know do control R to insert edge loops all along this and try to you know manipulate the vertices to try to get them to match up exactly speaking of vertices let me I could try to get those vertices to match up as accurately as possible I'll work on that later to this and then do an extrude, but I'm going to try something just a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and add a mesh. We're going to add a plane and we're going to scale it down. Now, just to make sure that, whoops, no, we have this centered at least on the X axis, which is this way right here. Go into, um, object x zero and we're going to just kind of place it like right smack dab in the middle like that there we go now what i'm going to go ahead and do actually let me move this up a little bit okay i'm also trying to think in great detail exactly what it is that i want to do with this particular uh, weapons module. The plans of this ship and the people that de de developed this ship, I think it was Alex Jaeger, Jaeger, if I remember correctly, I might be butchering his name and I apologize. Maybe somebody would like to correct me. Uh, but you no, know, they, they were talking about how this was ship right here. I mean, has a total of, you know, 15 torpedo tube launchers. Uh, I mean, right here you can see one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four. Oh, wait, no, there's more than that hip here. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten just in here alone. Um, Eleven, one more up front. And then there's, I think, two on each side. So 11, 12, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 torpedo launchers. I think that's just a bit, in my own opinion, uh, excessive for a Federation starship. So um, I'm going to model all that in there. It's just that whether if I want to call them actual torpedo tube launchers, I really don't know. Uh, they're just, just, once again, to me, it just seems just a little bit too excessive Oops. You know what? Well, let me start about this. Just seems just a little bit too excessive for Federation vessels. Maybe Klingon vessels, Romulan vessels, uh, Jemadar vessels, maybe, but Federation vessels, especially when we've seen the actual Enterprise D itself have the ability to where, I mean, their torpedo launchers are able to launch multiple torpedoes out at the same time from the same launcher. I mean, the Enterprise only has that one. Enterprise D only had that, oops, 
just that one forward facing torpedo launcher and back facing torpedo launcher but I, I think I remember seeing it and the um, the technical manual actually mentions that they have no let me do this let me try that again actually has the ability to fire up to 10 torpedoes out of the same launcher so with that being said once again I think it's a bit excessive so I'm going to model those in there, but I'm also probably going to go ahead and, oops, sorry. Oop. Oh, I, nope, no, I don't want to save these. Sorry, I just adjusted to get myself a little bit more comfortable. Cancel.